Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd. Continuing on in our dars in, in basic fiqh, in our discussion of hayat, and this is very, very important, and I hope that this will be a benefit to us, and a benefit to us on our scale of good deeds, be it Allah ta'ala. May Allah forgive us of our many sins, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So continue on, hayat, or menstruation, this is the blood that flows from a woman, uh, that comes from her, her, her womb, and without getting into all the medical aspects of it, which I'm fairly unaware of, and the hikmah, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it is a form of uh, purification and a time to, uh, you know, and, uh, for, you know, the developing of, for the for for childbirth and preparation and so forth and so re- related to height we'll read a hadith of the prophet sallallahu wasallam which tells us and it's the first hadith in this chapter of height in 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 the last section of tahara in purification and it's a hadith and and it goes right into istihada so we're going to have to talk about istihada i won't be able to prolong it anymore but we'll have to talk very briefly about istihada. So let's read the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and get as much basira and fiqh as we can. An Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha an Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh sa'alati sa'alati Nabi Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqalat inni ustahada inni ustahadu fala athur afa ad'u salat قال الله إن ذلك عرق ولكن ولكن ضاعي الصلاة قدر أيام التي كنت تهيدين فيها ثم اغتسلي وصلي رواه بخاري وفي رواية وليس بحيدة فإذا أقب فإذا أقبلت الحيدة فترقي الصلاة فإذا ذهب قدرها فاغسلي عنك الدم وصلي رواه بخاري ومسلم Incredibly important hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said that Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh radiallahu ta'ala anha asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said, Verily, I am, I have istihada. Istihada meaning that this is blood that flows from a woman's vagina, akramakum Allah, which is not menstruation. So it's any other blood. Uh, that that is not either nifas. Nifas is also blood that is after that's uh, postnatal uh, blood bleeding. Meaning after a woman has had a child, that bleeding that is called nifas. Haith is call is is menstruation, and the third type of blood is um, is called uh, istihava. And so she said that I am having this you know this other blood and I do not become pure meaning she was bleeding continuously and she, it had been a long period of time and so then she asked should I uh, should I leave the prayer should I stop praying and the Prophet ﷺ responded and said no verily that is like a vein it, it is a vein so leave Praying the days, the amount of days in which you normally have menstruation. Then uh, purify yourself, meaning take a shower and pray. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. And in the other narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, No, that is not hayat. You know, that is not menstruation. So if you have. Uh, your your height during height uh, during a certain period. Then you leave the prayer during that time period. And then when that time period is over, you should make a shower, wa- and, and 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 wash the the blood, and then pray. In those two narrations, it's very clear the ahkam 
from those narrations, letting us know the difference between haid wa uh, mustahada or istihada. And so, haid, as we mentioned, it has certain things that we have to leave. And we mentioned that in the other two, in the previous two sittings related to menstruation. Istihada, when a woman is having this this other bleeding which is not considered her menstruation that during this time of istihada she can pray she can have relations with her husband even sexual relations because this is not menstruation blood and and do the other things but what she should do is for every salat she must take a shower she must make a ghusl I mean, she must I'm sorry for every salat she must make wudu not ghusl. So that's very important to distinguish that. So then when a woman has her pre... Uh, uh, when she is istihada, when she is has this extra bleeding, that she must make wudu, she does not have to make ghusl for her, this istihada. So that's the difference between uh, uh, haid. Haid, of course, she can't pray. And until she finishes her menstruation for the period of her menstruation and then she takes a shower and, and cleans her, her womb and takes a shower and then she uh, can p begin praying. However, istihada, if she has this bleeding, it's continued. The blood is not, has not stopped. She's continuing. She's bleeding, been bleeding all day. For every salat, she, makes, she needs to make wudu and then continue praying and make sure she doesn't make the masjid uh, uh, dirty. So in the hadith, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu we, we learn many, many benefits from this hadith. One of the benefits is the difference between dim al and istihada, meaning menstruation blood and blood which is, um, which is uh, another type of blood but flowing from the same area. That there's a difference and the istihada is blood that is that that is continual bleeding. This is continual bleeding, and it could happen from some sort of sickness, or ailment, or something in in relation to that. And if this happens, what we learn from this hadith is that if this happens during uh, a woman's uh, or, or she's say a woman's been bleeding for thirty days, if she has thirty days of istihada, then she would look to her regular habit, her regular menses, menses comes, maybe it comes the third of every month. So from the, and it lasts for seven days. This is an example. So if for that woman, she's been bleeding 30 days or longer, and she, it comes on the time where her normal menses would be, which would maybe it's the third of the month, and it lasts for seven days. Then for that third of the month, Starting the third of the month, for seven days, she will not pray. She will, that blood will be considered haid. Then after that seven days, which is her adha, which is her, her habit, then she, she will wash herself, make ghusl, and clean herself, akramakum Allah. And then she will begin praying, but for every salat, she must make wudu. And that's the difference. And she can begin having relations and all the other uh, uh, rulings pertaining to, uh, you know, all, all the regular things that she can she can do that she was prohibited from during her menstruation. So that's very important for us to have an understanding. Another um, another benefit we learned from this hadith is that dimma istihada or this this type of blood bleeding does not prohibit a, a woman from salat or the rest of her ibadah even as far as fasting her fasting uh, she can fast and it is accepted and it is not uh, unlike uh, the woman who is menstruating another benefit we gain from this hadith is that of course haith prohibits from salat and this is very clear from here uh, and there is no qada, there is no making up the salat. As we mentioned prior to this, that a woman does not have to make up salat. Uh, and, the, and Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that uh, this is something, there is a consensus of the scholars regarding this uh, issue. And the only people who differ with this 
uh, you know, there was a consensus between the later scholars and the Salaf of this Ummah. And the only ones who differ were the Khawarij. The Khawarij used to, uh, they, they differed with regards to, uh, to this issue. And it shows that this is, this is actually, it becomes then, since Ahl Sunnah is united on it, that you only see Ahl Bid'a differing with them in this Ahkam. Another benefit that we gain from this, meaning that, and, 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 and another point that we need to look at, why the Khawarij, they held this view, because the Khawarij felt that the woman must make up her, her prayer. And this is according to the Madhab of the Khawarij, but the Salaf of this Ummah did not hold this opinion or this view. No, one, no other scholars held, no scholars held this view. Uh, another benefit and, and we just mentioned that, um, is that also we learn from this hadith that dim, dim al haith and dim al nifas, you know, the, the, the menstruation blood and the other blood, all, all the blood is najis. That it's najis and is wajib to wash the blood. So that means when a woman is going to pray and she is istihada, meaning she's not the premenstrual blood, I mean, not menstruating blood and not blood, uh, this is blood from some sort of sickness, she should wash the blood. She should attempt to wash and then make wudu because it is still a type of najis, but it is not on the level of menstruation blood because she's not prohibited from praying with that. Another benefit we gain from this is that it's an obligation is that it is not an obligation for the woman to make ghusl for every salat when she has, when she's, uh, if she's mustahava, meaning that she is a, uh, uh, she is having this other blood which is not menstruating blood and it is not blood after uh, postnatal birth bleeding. If it is not those two things and it's just some blood, she doesn't know why she's bleeding, this extra blood and it's, it's going for so long, she does not, it is not an obligation for her to make ghusl, uh, but it rather to clean herself and make wudu when she's preparing to pray. Those are some of the main benefits from this hadith, and there are immense benefits from the ulama. And we're going to continue on in our lesson until we complete the chapter of these hadith about haith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.